worthy Lamb of God, Jesus Christ. We stand here tonight living testimonies. We, we testify of the goodness of the Lord. I will testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Oh, folks, do you realize that you receive the blessings of God every day? Every single day, whether you think of God or not, whether you have a relationship with God or not, do you realize that you receive from Him of His goodness, of His mercy in your lives? Oh, folks, tonight we're here to remind you as we end the year, in just a couple hours, we will enter into a new year. Do you realize that this year was a year of God's blessing in your life? Do you realize that you're still alive? Do you realize that you still live, that you still move, that your heart is beating, your blood is circulating in your veins? You see, this is a, a life is a gift from God. And now we stand as a testimony here before you to remind you as you enter into the new year, think about the living God, the one who grants you mercy, who grants you life, the one who even tolerates and is long-suffering to you in your sins. Oh, if the Lord should mark iniquity, who would stand? Who would stand if God would mark iniquity? Do you realize that in your lives, God sees all of your sins, and yet His goodness rests upon you? God sees all of your sins, and God delays His judgment upon you that you might be saved. You see, God, God's intent is to bring you to salvation. God wants you to be saved from your sins. That is why He bears with you. He, he bears long with you as you reject Him. Do you realize that few go to heaven? Jesus Christ said, few enter into life. Will you be one of the few? Are we here? We're here tonight proclaiming the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. God is good toward you even when you sin against Him. You don't deserve. We don't deserve His mercy. And yet God grants us mercy. Even in your sin, God grants you mercy that, that in His goodness you might come to repentance. Will you come to repentance? Will you turn to Christ? Christ is your only hope. He is the hope of salvation. Jesus Christ came into this world to save you from your sins, to save you from the bondage of sin that holds you like a slave. Oh, that's why we proclaim His goodness before you tonight. We, we plead with you to turn to the living God, Jesus Christ. Put down your false gods. Put down the lust of your flesh. Put down your independent will, your independent living apart from God. Why do you, well, why would you be so proud against the living God? Why would you exalt yourself into God's place? Do your own planning, live your own life. Take for granted the air that you breathe, the life that you live, the, the, uh, your eyesight, that you take so much of God's gift and God's goodness for granted. Oh, folks, tonight we plead with you as 2016 comes, this could be your year of salvation, or this could be the year that you see God, that you stand before the judge of all the earth. Oh, it's a fearful thing, folks, to fall into the hands of the living God. I mean, I tremble. I stand here realizing that someday, someday I will stand before Him. And apart from His goodness, apart from His righteousness, apart from Jesus Christ, I cannot stand before God. Can you? Can you stand before God without God overshadowing you with His righteousness, with His goodness, God forgiving you of your sin? How does God forgive you of your sin? How can you stand before God and be absolved from all your sins? Do you realize that you have sin that separates you from the living God? And that sin, unless it is dealt with, will find you out. Oh, you will have to give an account when you stand before Him. Folks, 
Oh, we plead with you today. Today is the day of salvation. You might not have the whole of 2016. Your time appointed to stand before God may come sooner rather than later. And then what will you do? What happens if you die in your sins? Think about it. Think about all your sins. What happens when you have to give an account of all those sins? Woo! That makes me shudder. That makes me, that gives me the chills to think about the fact that sin separates you from God. You realize you can't go to heaven in your sins. You cannot go into God's kingdom in your sins. You must have a redeemer. You must have a penalty, a payment for your sin. Folks, you can't die in your sins and go to heaven. Jesus Christ said, if you die in your sins, if you believe not that I am he, you will die in your sins. Folks, in your unbelief, if you die in your unbelief, you will die in your sins. You will go to hell. You will spend eternity up separated from God in hell. Folks, we don't want you to go there. That's why we plead with you. Change your attitude toward God. You can't live a life that's independent of the Lord. You have to reckon with Him. You must be born again. Oh, we cry out to you tonight. Many of you Americans know the gospel. Many of you Americans know about Jesus Christ, and yet you reject Him. You honor Him with your lips, but your heart is far from Him. Oh, you're a religious hypocrite. Do you honor God with your lips, but your heart is far from Him? You don't serve the Lord, even though you know He exists. You don't come to Christ unless you get in trouble. And then you come to him and say, oh, God, help me. God, help me. But your heart really is far from him. And God doesn't hear those prayers. God only hears the prayers of the humble. When you humble yourself before him, he will lift you up. Yes. Oh, come to him when you're a child. Come to Christ when, you, when you're a child before sin overtakes you and you become a slave to it. Christ himself is the one. Jesus Christ wants to lead you through life, just like you lead that little doggy through life. But Christ wants to lead you as a shepherd. Christ wants you to come to him for life, life abundantly. Jesus, Jesus Christ, he is calling you to himself. Will you come to him? What is your eternal destiny? Do you even care? Do you even realize that you will die and stand before God? Is there any fear of God in your eyes, in your mind, in your heart? Do you realize that your actions have consequence? Do you realize that the things that you do in this life bear consequence in the life to come? Do you realize that God knows every one of your thoughts, hears every one of your words, hears every word that you speak against Him, toward Him? Oh, I'm telling you folks, Today is a day of salvation. <clears throat> don't let another year, don't let another day pass without getting right with God. Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? The, all unbelievers will go into the lake of fire. You have no excuse not to believe in the Lord. He has given you ample evidence of his existence. He has given you a conscience. Moses spoke of him. Moses said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Your own prophets spoke of him in Isaiah. Oh, ladies, gentlemen, don't push away the evidence of God. Your own conscience bears witness that he is alive. You know in your conscience what is right and wrong. That is God. That is what God has placed within you. Why do you push him away? Are you going to be saved when you die? Will you go to heaven or hell? What is your eternal destiny? What is your eternal destiny? Well, that's why we cry out to you tonight. Oh, America, you're a nation of apathy. You're America. America's a nation of pleasure, abortion. America's a nation that uh, murders its unborn children. America's a nation that has murdered 57 million babies in the womb. Oh, and the wrath of God hasn't fallen yet. Oh, God is long-suffering, and America aborts its children. 
in Planned Parenthood, health care, and calls Amer America calls abortion health care. God calls abortion murder. Oh, what will happen when the hammer drops down on America? When the hammer of chastisement, when the hammer of justice drops down upon our land? God is going to require payment for innocent blood that has been shed. God is going to require the payment for all of the innocent blood and for the apathy of pastors that will not even speak against the horrors of this wickedness called abortion. That's right. God is going to call all these pastors up and he's going to hold them accountable for their silence. Hold them accountable for pushing away that which is dear to him. You see, Jesus Christ said, suffer the little children to come unto me. Forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, America, the judgment of God rests upon you. Why? Because you, neg you reject goodness. You are idle. You are in pleasure against him. So God allows, God allows other religions to come to our land. God allows others to come and promote other religions. But I'm telling you, folks, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. You should be in trembling and in fear. But why aren't you? Because you don't fear God. You think you're, God's going to overlook your sins. But God doesn't overlook any sin. No, He doesn't. God does not overlook sin. That's why I'm here tonight to, to encourage you to stand before the living God. Confess your sins before Him. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you can be saved. God is going to hold you accountable for all of your sexual sins, for all of your fornication, your pornography, for all of your abortions, for all of your God rejection, your homosexuality. God will hold you accountable for those things unless you repent. We're calling you to repent. We're pleading with you to come to the living God. Jesus Christ, He is the way. Guys, Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. He said, I came into the world as a light to illuminate the darkness, the darkness in our heart, the darkness of sin. Christ is the light that flushes out your sin. He is the one that will bring illumination to your sin and show you and reveal to you your need of salvation. Oh, don't push Him away. Don't push Christ away. When the Spirit of God is speaking to you and showing you of your sins, humble yourself. Fall down before Him. Say, Jesus, save me. Christ is the Savior. Without Christ, you'll perish in your sins. He is the door in which you enter into heaven. He is the shepherd of the sheep. He is the way into heaven. He is the truth. Jesus Christ made this claim. He said, I am truth. Muhammad is not truth. The Pope is not truth. Obama is not truth. Jesus Christ, he is the truth. Will you hear him? Are your ears open to what he says? Christ is the truth. If you reject the truth, you will die in your sins. If you reject the truth, you will die in your sins. If you reject Christ, you will die in your sins. That's why we call out to you. Do not be God rejectors. Change your attitude before the living God. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Do not reject the truth. Do not reject the life. Do not reject the way into heaven. Jesus is the way into heaven. Jesus is the light that will lighten your life, will give you life. Jesus Christ died for your sins that you might be saved. Oh, we plead with you tonight. America, how much time do you have? You're not even guaranteed your next breath. That is a gift from God. Do you realize? Your next breath is a gift from God. Your next breath is a gift from God. Take nothing for granted. Humble yourself before the mighty hand of the Lord that He might lift you up. It's the goodness of God that leads you to repentance. If you hear His voice,